Karishma, you've wondered to us what is your decision and why? We love a bat. I think um, the pitch is really good for batting, um, and I, I believe that if we set a target, we'll be able to defend it. It's not the best 50 overs by your standard. You have a pretty young team. Um, what sort of areas have you pinpointed that you can work on coming into this T20 to give you a better start in this tournament? Yeah, obviously, I mean, um, I believe that, you know, the confidence in the girls um, has been lifted. I think that's what has been lacking. Um, there's nothing with our skills or, you know, abilities to play this game. And I really believe in them and we'll come with a better show. All right, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. So you've lost the toss. What would you have done had you won the toss? Hi, Stacey. Yeah, I'm good to see you. Um, we will have Thank a bat. You. I know it was a pretty good wicket. You know, looking at the first game, I know I think the ball was coming out really good. I think it's all about applying yourself on this wicket and get through the line. All right. So, I mean, you've played second last year in this same tournament, second again this year in the 50 over place. Good start to you. But what areas have you identified that can take you to first place in this tournament? Um, you know, definitely I think it's with batting because over the year we've been, um, you know, laps in our batting. I think, you know, if all the girls come out and get some runs on the board, I think it will be real pressure for the other team to come out and score the runs with the bowling attack that we have. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you and all the best in this game. Yeah, thanks, sis. All right, well, there you have it from the toss. Trinidad and Tobago, they've won the toss and they've decided to have a bat for us. Welcome back to Warner Park, and we're seeing game two of the day. It's the T20 Blaze, West Indies Women's Female 2020 competition. And what a start we got off to this morning with the Leeward Islands notching up their very first victory. But not just the victory. They defeated the defending champions and completed a bonus point as well. Good start to the competition, Stacey Ann. Yes, indeed so. Um, the Leeward Islands certainly <laughs> the, um, the team that's thinking. Certainly a good start for them in this tournament. Um, a historic win, as you rightly said, in this tournament for them. Um, we've been treated to a mouth-watering first game, so let's see what's in store for the second contest between Trinidad and Tobago and Guyana. And the Trinidad and Tobago won the toss and decided to bat no surprise because the pitches here at Warner Park have played really well. And another good pitch this morning. Yes, indeed. And if the trend has been set, Leeward Islands, they won the toss, they batted first, and they have won. The Trinidad and Tobago, they have decided that they are going to bat first as well on this trip. And uh, the players out for Trinidad and, and Tobago are Mitchell, Alexander, and uh, Samaru. Mitchell, Alexander, and Samaru out for Trinidad and Tobago. And uh, the players out for Guyana? Yes, the players out for Guyana are Yonet Welcome, Naomi Barkoy, and Trisha Haddett. And we're just about ready to start. And we'll be seeing that Fraser starts with a wide delivery down the onside, and they'll get an extra because they're running through for and this uh, an extra run and uh, that's a little bit of careless cricket by Guyana which has resulted in two extra runs so action from ball one yes and that's typical of Trinidad and Tobago they are always looking to steal a run somewhere and they manage to pick up three runs um, additionally um, with that wide so two runs plus that wide so the openers for Trinidad and Tobago is Brittany Cooper and Celine O'Neill and uh, Fraser is back opening the bowling for Guyana. She picked up an, er an injury early in the 50 over competition. And goes away from us. This one is better lined, pushed into the offside and chasing quickly through for a single. And uh, so the score moves on to four. A lot of cricket being played in the region. Can't complain about that. Yesterday, so the end of round four in the for the competition for the West Indies. Guyana 436 and 136 for 8. Declared. Winning over Barbados by 33 runs. Barbados 230 and 309. So Fraser has some ability, but she tended to pick up injuries quite often.
Yeah, she has some pace about her. He moves that ball both ways. And she's certainly one that the Trinidad and Tobago will be looking to see off early on. I'm keeping my fingers crossed and hoping that she can have a good, healthy spell in front of her. Indeed, so it was quite unfortunate that she picked up that injury in that first game of the competition. When she came back well in the last game, um, was part of the victorious side that defeated the Jamaican team, picking up second place in that Super 50 tournament. Back of a length, punch into the offside. They won't score. Celine O'Neill is the batter who is on strike. The Red Force defeated the Windward Islands in the four-day competition, 294 and 186. Windward's 191 and 288. Red Force winning by six wickets. Fraser is tall. Nice athletic run-up. Back of a length, punch into the offside. We'll go down to third man. They'll get another run to take the score into five. The academy going past 300, 324 and 281. Scorpions 372 and 236 for eight, winning by two wickets. And uh, CCC 273 and 301. The Leewards 259 and 319 for seven. Leewards winning by three wickets. But it's the T20 Blaze. And Fraser is bowling to Cooper. He's pulling down to long leg. There's a field on the boundary. It goes directly to her. And it will bring up the sixth run of the inning. We're in the first over. Left and right batters at the crease. And so the umpires and the field change over. There's the two umpires today. Umpire Maria Abbott and umpire Caroline. Caroline Brown. And here is Cherry Ann pulling out of a run up and doesn't deliver. And uh, that's Brown signaling the dead ball. Bit of cloud around there, Carlisle. Well, certainly, hopefully, no threat of rain today. Hopefully not. Fraser, last legal delivery of the over. Down the leg side. The shout goes up, but that's from the body of the batter. And so the end of the first over, six for no loss. Yes, that's a dead start there from both teams. Six runs, Trinidad and Tobago. They look quite positive, looking to run hard so far. That's what I've noticed about them. Not trying to leave any runs out there. So six without loss to start proceedings here at Warner Park St. Kitts. Leewards earlier today bringing up a victory against Barbados. Leewards making 139 for 7. 15 extras in that total. Good knock of 67 by Boyce. And uh, also excellent bowling. 4 for 9 from Cumberbatch. That's a new bowler. On the far end is Flaffiana Millington, ever reliable Flaffiana, always in the wickets every tournament. So. Loud shout goes up and the finger of the umpire goes up as well and so Brittany Cooper will have to go. She has been judged out LBW, very first delivery from the new bowler in Millington, sweeping across the line. That look f looks fair enough. Yeah, it does. And I was just saying, Flappiana Millington, she's one of the wicked takers for the Guyana team. Did so in the super, super over. And here she is starting straight line. Brittany Cooper looking to play across. A sweep shot with that one. Unfortunately, missing. And that looked to be crashing into the stump. So, Guyana, first wicket to them. And uh, they're showing Schultz on the screen, but we're saying that's number nine, that's Millington. One more step, one more so Trinidad and Tobago losing their first wicket with the score on six. It's six for one. So the new batter is Janaba Joseph. 
another young prodigious talent in the West Indies. She'll be hoping that she can score some runs in this T20 blaze for her team. And she's playing and missing is Joseph as it went through for the keeper to take. Certainly we have lost the sunshine here at Warner Park. Come overcast. And here she's driving in the air and she drops it. Was a return catch. It was easy. It was about knee height. And she came forward. Millington seemed to have had it in her hands. And then she grasped it. Uh, and we're hoping that's not a costly miss. Janab is also a key batter in this Trinidad and Tobago lineup. And to have them two down in this over would have been great for Guyana. An opportunity missed. Well, well, well. She can't blame anybody else. It was off her own bowling. And it wasn't difficult either. Joseph is yet to score. And she's driving, dragging this one off the under portion of the bat. Bounces for the first slip to take. And the score remains on the six for one. Millington to finish the over, giving that some width. And she was driving at it, not moving her feet was Joseph. Two overs completed, it's six for one. Fraser, first delivery of the over, driven by O'Neill, and the excellent work shadowing there by the extra cover. And so they can't score, but an early setback for Trinidad and Tobago, and it could well have been two, but for a missed bowling court chance. Yes, and we saw what happened in that first game. Um, Renice Boyce was dropped twice, and she went on to score a half century. Bowled him. She was playing across the line of a delivery which was pitched just about middle and off. And she didn't move her feet at all. It went crashing into the off stump. And the Trinidad and Tobago are two wickets down. Fraser has a wicket. That's a really good ball in this play so far from the guy and a team. Attacking the stumps is Fraser on that occasion. Selena Neal, as you mentioned, no foot movement playing across that one and crashing into that the off stump. So two down early for the guy on the team. And again, you have to keep reminding these batters that 20 overs is a lot of balls. It's 120 balls. They're playing as if we were in the last over of the 20 and they desperately needed a boundary to win. Delivery which could easily have been defended and she was just throwing everything at it and it went crashing into her off stump. But you have to say good bowling by Guyana to start this game. Indeed. I mean, a, a lot of people have said that the Guyana team, they have the best bowling attack in the tournament. They have defended almost any score that they've put on the board. So Trinidad and Tobago should be thinking to themselves, what sort of total can they put on the, on the board to give some trouble to the Guyana attack? Because their batting has been really... More so, the let down for them if they were to assess themselves honestly. And I think the captain said that at the toss as well that they need to get their batting right. Fraser bowls to Saw, who is getting a short delivery and just leans away from that and allows it to go through for the keeper to take. Yes, that's a good delivery. Um, I must say, it's a delivery that's underutilized in the female game, but. Every now and again, if you have that in your armory, you should look to bowl that, especially to a new batter just coming in under pressure. Six runs on the board with two wickets down. So good thinking there from Sherry and Fraser. 
halfway through her over and uh, bowls a short delivery which is that's well played over the head of the fielder there at gully and it races across the backward point boundary for four yes another short delivery but with offer this time well it was actually a really nicely played delivery it climbed on her but she waited on it and just placed it over that fielder's head at, at point pick up the first boundary in this um trinidad and tobago um innings and the saw gets off the mark with a four it's 10 for the loss of two again short good thinking by the boulder and um, this time a little fuller and very well played by saw as well she didn't fall into the trap just left it yeah she dropped her hand so it was very important and just watched it through to the keeper Fraser to finish the over, again short of a length and allowed to go through four runs and a wicket in the over. Ten for the loss of two wickets, Trinidad and Tobago winning the toss and batting. Millington will continue. And she's bowled him. Again playing across the line of the delivery. It was a full pitch delivery. No feet movement at all. Just pushing the hands at it. And it went through and had her comprehensively bowled as she played right across the line of the delivery. Off stump gone. Not the kind of star trader that Tobago would have wanted. They won the toss and batted, and they're three wickets down. Yeah, she was nowhere near with Janaba, looking to play across the line, and would have been better off looking to play that straight back to the bowler. Maybe had in her head that dropped opportunity where she played it back and was and it was a bit uppish. Uh, the bowler dropped it on this occasion. She decided, you know what, I'm just going to hit the stumps, so far, three wickets, all straight deliveries from the guy on the team. So they're bowling well to their plans, keeping it wicked to wicked. And uh, Guyana would be elated. They played well in the 50 over competition, very quietly. And uh, at the end of the tournament, they would have walked away feeling some confidence because they defeated the newly crowned champions and here now against Trinidad and Tobago three wickets down and we're only in the fourth over loud shout for LBW the umpire is thinking about it she's given it oh cat um caught at the wicket and so wickets in consecutive balls Four wickets down for ten runs and Trinidad in all sorts of trouble. Yes, Rafiana Millington. I mean, she's gone and picked up that big wicket of Leon Kirby. Um, Leon Kirby has been one of the stellar performers for the Trinidad and Tobago, this Trinidad and Tobago outfit in the 50 over version. And to pick up that wicket, it's huge. It's a court behind that they appealed for. Umpire Maria Abbott raised the finger. All of the batters are wrong the bat. The fielders are wrong the bat. Seem pretty confident about that appeal. And it's ten for four. Game is going at a breakneck pace. It's ten for the loss of four. And Millington is on a hat trick. She has picked up three wickets already. But she's on a hat trick. The new batter is Shani's Pascal. <laughs> and that was all so close to the half stump. Rafiana Millington really getting the ball to talk. They're looking for a second run. This could be trouble. With good run so in the end. <laughs> this throw had been on target. Guy. She might have been in some trouble. 
Yeah, so that dismissal of Leon Kobe, just looking at it, uh, that was Pascal. We'll, we'll see the Kirby dismissal again. Yeah, yeah. Trinidad and Tobago are 12 for the loss of four. Yeah, so far what we've seen, the, the three dismissals, of the four dismissals, well, apart from Kirby, the three batters, first batters dismissed, they played across the line. So for now, the Trinidad and Tobago, they should just be looking to play with a straight bat, try and put some sort of targets on the board that might be challenging to this guy in an outfit. But well, Millington is giving it a nice loop. Bringing the long on straighter, and uh, she's playing away in the onside. Brings up the end of an eventful over. Two wickets and two buys in the over. At the end of over number four, it's 12 for the loss of four Trinidad and Tobago batting. Back live, Fraser is bowling a very wide delivery which goes through for the keeper. And the score will move on to 13 for 4. Trader and Tobago will take every single run on offer. Chanel Saw is on 4 from 4. Pascal is yet to score. Fraser picked up 1 for 11 so far. She's in her third over. And is bowling to Saw. And she's defending nicely, up to extra cover, we won't score. We're in game two of three games today. Trader and Tobago playing against Guyana in the 2.30 game. At 7 o'clock it will be Jamaica versus the Windward Islands. Delivery which is turned down fine. This will go across the boundary for four. And so the score will move on to 17. A strain in line a little bit there, Fraser. And uh, giving up four runs down to fine leg. shot well saved as well and driven firmly into the offside and the cover was diving across to her right knocking it down for extra cover to retrieve so a single will take the score to 18 for four yeah that was such a pleasant drive from Sao. looks pretty confident since she's gotten to the wicket but a nice piece of field in there by Casey Schultz to keep it from crashing into the boundary Pascal is getting a delivery down the leg side, called and signaled wide. And the score moves up to 19 for four. Short. Wide, and called and signaled wide. So Fraser has been all over the place. Wide on the offside, wide on down the leg side. Oh, what a lovely picture our cameraman has found for us. Well, those two are happy. <laughs> 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 Is it Valentine's? <laughs> <laughs> it's coming up to Easter. <laughs> <laughs> Three wides in the over so far. Sherry and Fraser is bowling, and this one is turned into the onside, just 
backward of square they'll have a single pascal gets off the mark and the score moves to 21 for four two legal deliveries left in the over Short delivery, which is, she's looking to turn it into the onside, took the leading edge, went into the offside, but fell safely. Yes, luckily for her and Trinidad and Tobago, I would have certainly put a dent in their batting lineup. As I said, Sauer has looked most positive since she's come to the middle. Fraser to finish the over and she's driving pleasantly into the offside this one will run close to the boundary but it will be pulled back inside is it yes it is and they will get three runs but a lovely shot again by Chanel Sau yes it's over pitching on that occasion Fraser and Sau in all her positivity found the gap on that occasion but just didn't have the legs to go to the boundary but Three runs are the same. Good chase by those three. Casey Schultz, Flaffiana Millington, and Grimman running it down to pull it back in. So 24 for one after five overs. Trinidad would have loved if it, if it was 25 for one. It's 24 for four. Five overs completed. And the 12 runs in the last over from Fraser. Millington will continue. So he's back and cutting into the offside. They won't score. Hope you had a very good lunch, Shakira. I did indeed. Good. Drive in, down to long on, and uh, that will be a single. School moves on to 25 for four. It's a bad miss in the offside. Seemed to have had it covered. And uh, then it went behind her. They're chasing back for a second chance of a run out. A uh, batter is stranded in the middle of the pitch. And that's an easy run out. Oh, there was. Uh, so it was. It was ball watching. And uh, this is more misery for Trinidad and Tobago. It was played in the offside. It shouldn't have been a single. And a little bit of a bad bounce. Went past her. And uh, there was the non-striker yelling for all her worth. Let's have a second run. But there was a tremendous amount of ball watching. And uh, so there's a run out. Yeah, almost a comedy of errors. Firstly by Shanita Grimman at backward point. The second ball, she's misfielded. Just spinning to her left. Not covering the spin on that occasion. But a good chase into the outfield by Casey Schultz. Got it back into the way. Keeper Shamir Campbell. And terrible t communication on the part of Shanice Pascal and Chanel Sow, resulting in the run out of Pascal for just one. Trinidad and Tobago now 25 for four. I'm not sure if somebody said to the Trinidad and Tobago side that the high school championships are going on in Nevis right now. And that they should finish the game early so they can take a boat and go across and have a look. I'm sure that's not the case. And uh, with five wickets down in the sixth over for 26 runs, somebody's going to have to put their hand up and play a blinder for Trinidad and Tobago. First thing that they have to do is to ensure that they bat the 20 overs. Millington. And this saw is driving into the offside, won't score. 
Captain Karishma Ramarak has walked to the crease. And she has a big job to do first game as captain of the Trinidad and Tobago side. Driven nicely between the few that that's recovering it off. Ram Harak is on strike. So he's on fourteen. Wing over number six and Trinidad and Tobago at 27 for five. Leaves the delivery outside the Austin to bring up the end of the over 27 for five. Seven for the loss of five, and we're seeing a new bowler. Fraser has been replaced. Ashmini Munisar. Most wickets in a 50 over competition, 12 wickets in five games. She also got a five wicket haul. She'll be rearing. With confidence. And she's a very clever bowler, Ashmini Munasar. Not the biggest spinner of the ball. But what she does is she reads batters so well and adjusts so quickly. Quick single, and it, oh, how she hit, she was gone. Good moving by Shabika Gajnabi at mid-off. And was that a direct hit? Karishma Ramarak would have been sent back to the dugout. And it was her call. She was running to the danger end, and she would have been shot. Yeah, almost a suicidal single. Decides to take on one of the better fielders in this Guyana Line up. Tickets for the T20 World Cup, the Men's World Cup in the West Indies will be released on Tuesday. And uh, so if you're planning to attend these games, don't leave it to chance. You should try and get your tickets early. Remember, it's a World Cup not just for the West Indies and for America. It's a World Cup for people from around the world who will be traveling with their teams. At one apart, Trinidad and Tobago are 29 for 5. Chanel Sow is on 15 from 16. Munisa just completed her first over for two runs. 
change of bowling again. She need to Grimman into the attack for the first time today. She's driving his soul, peeling from the outer portion of the bat and runs down to third man for four. Right, go, That's in fact the captain, Ramarak, getting four runs. Yeah, good start for Shanita Grimman. Not the result she would have expected, but it's a good delivery, inducing the drive, getting the outside edge. No slip in place for Grimman. Power play is complete. So the Guyana side is allowed to employ all four fielders on the boundary. They've decided to just stick with the two fielders, and that's because they are in the commanding position. It's a good attacking captaincy from Shamian Campbell. The only thing I like to see is the slip, though. It's a left handed backhand, and you're all spinners bowling. And around the corner, crazy single chance of a run out. Easy run out. Oh, this is madness. There was never a single there. And it was up to the non-striker to say no. Because it was behind the striking batter. Instead of saying no and standing aground, she kept running. And that is what you call suicide. Yeah, and it's the one batter who's looked comfortable in this inning so far, Chanel So who has to go for 15 runs. Poor communication again by the Trinidad and Tobago batters. And the pressure really telling now. It's an easy run out by Ashmini Munisar running around from Batwar Square. There never was a single there. Unfortunately for So, she was afraid to tell her captain no. She has to go. It's further trouble now. Six wickets down, turned down to be a goal. For only 33 runs. And we're still in the eighth over. We were just speaking about good attacking captaincy and the fact that Shemi and Campbell decided to keep pressure on the batters and keep the fielders in the circle. And decisions like that lead to mistakes from the opponents. And after winning the toss and opting to bat first, everything has gone wrong for this Trinidad and Tobago side. Get into the offside, into the gap. There's a single on offer and they'll get that easily this time. 34 for 6. Samara Ramnath is a new batter. And she's off the mark immediately. She would have opened the bar in the Super 50 competition. Ram North, no bar in at 8. In this T20 side. End of over number 8. Trinidad and Tobago are 34 for 6. We need to start to continue. Played in the air, chance of a bowling court chance. She had to go around the non striking batter and she missed it. Yeah, valiant effort by Munisar. But Karishma Ramarat chose to stand her ground, making it very difficult for Munisar to get to that ball and complete the catch. It's good awareness by Ramarat. Mm. 
Munisa again in an action packed the game so far. And it's played away into the offside. No runs. 34 for 6. Now the field at mid on has been sent back to long on. Likewise, mid off has been sent back to long off. Well, three quarters of the way to the boundary. She's driving, but can only find the field at extra cover to end the over. 34 for six, Trinidad and Tobago. That's a police station. That's next door, just behind on the Lozak Road. Bringing across the line, loud shout for LBW. Yes, says the umpire. Wicket number seven goes down. 34 for seven, Trinidad and Tobago. Pressure again, pressure again. And you felt that that was going to happen. Could have been heading down the lay side. Perhaps that's why Karishma Ramarap is disappointed. But you knew a big shot was going to come. They were unable to find a single between Dana Tobago Bahers and Guyana well on top. No, they have seven wickets. Thirty-four for seven. And we're taking drinks. But at thirty-four for seven, Guyana completely in control of this game at this point.
Trinidad and Tobago, 30 34 for seven. This one is getting some bounds. And I'm sure that some of these uh, Trinidad and Tobago batters must be wondering what happened. Well, what happened is that they won the toss and decided to bat. And they batted poorly. This one is worked into the onside. Down to short fine leg and they'll get a single. Steffi Sue Grimm, the new batter off the mark. Played into the offside, into the gap. Brings the cover from halfway to the boundary into play for a single. And the score moves on to 36 for 7. 10 overs completed. Shakira, as if the troubles were not enough, the two runouts didn't help at all. Yeah, they'll be very disappointed with the fact that they offered up two wickets, two additional wickets to the guy on the side. After already being in trouble, Chanel Sol was run out for 15. The only batter who seemed comfortable. So too was Shanice Pasco for just one. Driving in the air over the head of the bowler and will run down towards the boundary. And they'll come back for a couple of runs. Score moves on to 38 for the loss of seven. Yeah, nice lofted drive by Samara Ram now to the right of the field at mid off. Gets her two runs. Still only two fielders on the boundary. Changing personnel. Cherry and Fraser comes to mid-off. Riliana Grimman, who just gave chase, gets a breather at extra cover. So our balls are wide. Driving off the edge, will run down straight and will go across the boundary now for four. There was no slip in place. Seven wickets down and the Trinidad and Tobago under pressure. But Captain Campbell has decided not to have a slip and they gave up four runs on that occasion. Yeah, that delivery just going on with the arm from Ashmini and Munisar and taking the outside edge of Samara Ramnath through the vacant slip area and into the boundary. A very important boundary. Every run is important for this train down at Tobago site. They need to give the bowlers something to defend. And they're way off that at the moment. Yeah, 44 for 7. have to go a long way to get the bonus batting point. Munisa. Given generous flight taken on the full low down on the bat and 
play to extra cover. Still no runs. Using a feet and attempting to drive this one into the onside. Comes from the inner portion of the bat and will go down to long leg where they'll get two more runs. Welcome runs for Trinidad and Tobago. It's 46 for the loss of seven. 11 overs have been completed. Another good shot by our cameraman showing a pilot boat in the harbor, and a cruise ship a little distance out, and a working cargo vessel closer in. Full delivery, but she can't make use of it, just finds mid wicket. Yeah, when you're struggling like this, you want to capitalize on any freebies offered up by the opponents. Unfortunately for Trinidad and Tobago, Steffi Sugrim unable to find any runs from that full toss. Partnership is 12, and if I tell you that that's the biggest of the innings so far, it may surprise some. But that says how much trouble Trinidad and Tobago found themselves in early. Quick single again. Off. Yeah, quick single, and uh, she was missing the stumps again. They haven't scored a direct hit yet, and I keep wondering, why is it Trinidad and Tobago insist on taking these singles, which are so tight? Yeah, I'll tell you the reason for that is because they're finding it very hard to find runs. Haven't been able to score easily. So in an effort to add runs to the total, they're having to take risks. No runs of that delivery to end the over. 12 overs completed. Trade and, and Tobago are 44 for 7. <laughs> 47, in fact, for 7. Having some issues with the score on our monitor. I think I'll revert to using the old fashioned scoreboard down at midwicket. Change of bowling again. Casey of Schultz will be introduced into the attack. She will be the sixth bowler used so far by the Guyana team. Left arm orthodox. And she will bowl to the Right-handed Steffi Sugrim. Still no slip. Three fielders on the boundary. Long on deep may wicket, may wicket and deep cover. Flighted, played well too. It's played out to extra cover, and they'll have a couple of runs as it runs close to the boundary. So two more to the total, 49 for the loss of seven. Scoreboard is showing 12 overs bold, win over number 13.
hit in the ear over the head of the bowler, that's a good shot. And uh, it will roll across the boundary at long off for four. So the 50 comes up for Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah, good shot by Steffi Sue Grimm. Realizing that the fielder was in the circle at mid-off. So it's a very low risk shot, even, even though it was hit in the ear. Had enough room for her to get her hands through it. And she was able to get under that delivery and lift it into the long off boundary. Forces a change in field. Fielder at mid-off goes back to the boundary. Six in the over so far. Full toss played into the onside. There's a fielder covering on the mid-wicket boundary. And so that will just be a single. Taking the score to 52 for 7. Long off comes back to mid-off. For Samara Ramnath. Leaves that one alone. End of the over. 13 gone. It's 54 for the loss of 7. Change of bowling at the far end. 54 for the loss of seven. It is here at, at Warner Park. So Latchman will come in to bowl from the far end. And the Guyana, they have a lot of bowlers and they're Rotating the bowlers uh, quickly. They've taken wickets. It's 54 for 7. 13 overs completed. Latchman with the wrist spinners. It's played away into the offside. has appreciable bones and uh, so Grimm was pulling her bat inside the line she's 16 from 17 these two have added some 20 very valuable runs Fifty four for the loss of seven. Short goes up. Only the bowler was just mildly interested. Been corrected and told that the score is on fifty three. The scoreboard is saying fifty seven. Fifty four in fact. So let's stand corrected at fifty three for seven. I think I'll keep my own score. Latchman and she's driving over the head of the bowler. Long off comes off the boundary. They'll have a single. And so Graham will move on to 17. And the score will move to 54 for 7. One delivery left in the over. Here is Latchman once more. And she's defending into the offside to bring up the end of the 14th over. And it's 
54 for the loss of seven. Yeah, good control start by Nia Latchman, the young wrist spinner from Burbies. Seven overs left in the inning. Schultz is bowling from the media center end. Current run rate is a 3.95. We're showing a projected score of 81. Schultz and uh, bringing the batter forward, driving is so grim, so grim. And she will get a single that will take her on to 12. Yeah, bad throw back in to the bowler. From the, from the fielder at long off. But no run added. Again, long off is brought back into the circle. Then Ram Nath is on straight. Quick single. Fraser unable to prevent that single. delivery but finding backward point to bring up the end of the over end of the over then it's 56 for the loss of seven Trinidad and Tobago if they do manage to get it to 80 runs they would have done well but they'll be hoping to at least surpass that and get to 100 if 100 runs their bowlers will still think there's something they can defend it's normally quite competitive whenever these two sides meet. And lots of overs to spin or always sink down. We've only seen one pacer for the inning so far. Cherry and Fraser who bowled three overs in an opening burst. Lashman to continue. We're in the final five overs of the inning. Extra bounce once more from Nia Latchman, and it's because of her very high arm action. She does release the ball from really high, and she's quite a tall bowler as well. Peel for LBW, the previous delivery, clearly missing leg. There's that bounce again. I said this the first game when I saw Nia Lachman here at Warner Park. Her control is very impressive. Hit in the ear, chance of a wicket going down. Nobody will get to it though. 
and so they'll have a single. Fielder from mid on was running across to mid off. Extra cover was running back and the long off was running in. But it fell safely and so a single. Score goes to 57 for 7. Another single to, to may take the score to 58 for 7. 16 overs completed, 4 to go. Driving again in the air, there's a fielder coming from long on, settles under it nicely and takes the catch. So wicket number eight goes down for Trinidad and Tobago and there are only 58 runs on the board. Yes, Samara Ramnath is the player who has to go, taking on the fielder at long on. Inspired change of bowling by captain Shemian Campbell, reintroducing Ashmini Munisari into the attack. She replaces Casey Schultz and immediately she makes an impact. So they break the end of a pretty good partnership between Stephanie Sue Grimm and Samara Ramnath. Trey Donna to be able 58 for 8. And I'm sure that they would, the coaches would have told them that listen, let's bat out the 20. Let's see how many we can get from the remaining overs. They don't have a lot on the board. They have 58. And every single run scored from here to the end of the inning would be treasure. Yeah, you can't completely fault the efforts of young Ramnath, though. She's looking to get as many runs as possible for her side. The only thing is that she opted to take on the fielder who was on the boundary mid-off was in the circle. So perhaps she would have been advised to go over mid-off instead. Good bowling by Ashmini Munisar. Looks to be another young player, KD Jazz, who's been sent to the crease. Ashmini Munisar will know Katie Jazz quite well. She was her captain at that on the 19 World Cup. Katie Jazz would have opened the bowling for the West Indies side. End of the over 17 completed and it's 58 for the loss of 8. Forgive me. I gave a long speech about KD Jazz and it's in, it's in fact Kanisha Isaac, who is at the crease. Another single.
score moves on to 59 for eight. So Kanisha Isaac comes into face Latchman. Good sweep shot. And going down towards the square leg boundary, challenging run for the fielder from midwicket. But she loses the chase and the four runs are scored for Isaac. Yeah, very well played by Isaac. There's no fielder square on the leg side. Good placement by her as well. She was able to get it on the full. Chance for a run out again. Easily done. The third run out in this inning so far. And Trinidad has to be disappointed with the display. Oh, this is not good cricket, not good communication, and terrible running between the batters for Trinidad and Tobago. Giving up the third run out and in a game where they're struggling and gifting wickets to, tr to Guyana. Uh, 63 for the loss of nine now. Steffi so grim, they bought her dismissed. Last pair at the crease. Latchman playing and missing. T20 debut for young Brace at this level. like Brianna Haricharan and she's taking strike from Latchman from the Lozak Road end and uh, it's given generous flight driving and just plays it into the pitch it goes back to the bowler to bring up the end of the over 18 completed and uh, the score 63 for the loss of nine Trinidad and Tobago batting first Two over groups remaining. Can the Trinidad and Tobago side battle their full quarter of 20 overs? 12 legal deliveries remaining. Plafiana Millington comes for her final over from the media center. Inc. Driving down to mid wicket, there's a field on the boundary, and they'll have a single. The score will move to 64 for nine. Trinidad and Tobago. Remember, they won the toss and decided to take first knock. Probably saw the leewards get 139 on this very same pitch. Milton has three wickets to her name so far. Dismiss Leanne Kirby, Janaba Joseph, and Brittany Cooper. Another single as the fielder from the mid-wicket boundary has to come off. And the score will move on to 64 for 9.
Short delivery hit in the air. Chance of a wicket. Catch taken. And so Trinidad and Tobago have been bowled out. They've been bowled out for 65. And uh, so Trinidad and Tobago won the toss, decided to bat, and uh, didn't put up a very good batting display at all. And their cause was not helped by some unfortunate runouts. Yeah, three runouts in that innings. So they were very disappointed with the lack of communication between the batters. Then around those runouts, there were very, some very tame dismissals. So not the display you expected from a team that won the toss and elected to bat first. And nothing is wrong with the pitch. It's the very same pitch that the Leewards and the Barbados played on earlier. Uh, but they have not helped themselves either. They batted poorly. And so we will see what Trinidad and Tobago have to offer now. Runs are already on the board. It's 65 all out. Uh, Guyana will need 66. And at times during the 50, the batting looked a little suspect. Yeah, lots to do for their bowlers. The credit must be given to the Guyana side. They did take use of every opportunity given to them. There was just the one drop chance by Plafiana Millington. But she ended up still dismissing Janaba Joseph. So she got four wickets to her name. Plafiana Millington, the star with the ball for Guyana's side. So Guyana, when we resume, we'll need 66 to win. We'll be back with you for the response from Guyana.
welcome back to Warner Park where Guyana will start their chase of 67 runs to win game which went at a frantic pace when the Trinidad and Tobago batted. They lost wickets early and lost wickets often. Yes, so the opening bowler, no surprises there, spin right away. Left arm spinner Steffi Sugrim opening batters for Guyana is Gajnabi, who's on strike, and Shinita Griman at the non strikers end. <laughs> Delivery, which saw the batter backing away and uh, looking to play into the offside and got a bat down just in time. Got a single. That's really well bowled there from Steffi Sugrim. That one coming in with the arm. Seemed to be that arm ball on that occasion. Very straight delivery. And Trinidad and Tobago will need to take wickets early. Target is a small one. This one is defended into the onside and they won't score. I'm wondering here what will be the approach. I mean, given the two opening batters, I'm believing that the guy on the team, they're not going to hold anything back. They're going to go hard at the score, try to get a bonus point as well. And she's right across the wicket, turning this one into the onside, taking all that risk for nothing. Yes, an ill-advised shot at this point in time, quite risky, as you said, um, if you notice in the Trinidad innings, a lot of the batters got this misplaying across the line early. Very so grim. Again, she has been on target so far. And she's driving and missing, goes into the pads, the shouts go up, but the finger of the umpire stays down. Yeah, that one was certainly heading down leg there from Sugrim, but a pretty good start. She's looking to keep the stumps in play here, much like what the spinners for the Guyana team did. So certainly good options from her early on. Short delivery turned into the onside, finds mid-wicket, and they won't score. One delivery left in the over. So Grim is the bowler. Left arm from around the wicket. This one is short. She's cutting at it. Goes to the keeper. And there's a one over completed. Guyana one for no loss. Karishma Ramarak has the ball in hand, skipper of the Trinidad and Tobago team, first time as captain in this competition. I think she's doing the right things, using the slower bowlers early. Both teams are, are kind of similar, a lot of spinners in, in their attack, one pacer in that, well there's Kanisha Isaac and Kirby that can lend a hand with some seam bowling as well. But they, they predominantly operate with a spin bowling attack to Trinidad and Tobago, much like the guy on the team. And there's a strip shot to display. It comes from the back of the bat. Uh, it's running down to fine leg, and they'll get two runs.
play nicely there by Gajnavi, but just couldn't find a gap on that occasion. Trader and Tobago being bowled out in the 19th over. Only made 66. Here's a delivery which has Gajnavi advancing, driving down to long on. And she'll get a single to take on to three. Back, turn it in, into the onside. Some hesitation, but they're very safely through for run number four. Yeah, a bit of miscommunication there between the two, but eventually it came through quite easily for the single. And surely they would have taken some example from the first innings, Trinidad and Tobago losing three wickets to the via that run out route. So certainly we wouldn't want to give away a wicket here, Guyana, to that run out. Change in the field. The fielder comes from the offside to a short backward square. Sweep in, but directly to the field at short fine. And it's through the fielder, in fact. And so there's a single. Train that can ill afford to give up these extra runs by way of misfeeling. End of the over, so two overs completed, and uh, the score is an eight. Eight, it's six, six in fact, for no loss. to Gajnabi, who's come out with plenty of intentions to play that sweep shot. He's played that sweep shot around three times so far in this pretty short innings. She's advancing, playing it powerfully, but straight to the field at mid-off, and they won't score. Kashnabi is on five. <laughs> Sugrim has been pretty accurate so far. Kashnabi is advancing once more, finds mid off, and again she won't score. That's some good bowling so far from Sugrim, just looking to keep the stumps into play. Good use of the feet there by Gajnami. Looking to stifle any spin, try to meet it on the full, but just not able to clear the gap, to find the gap and pass the feelers. Driving again to the left of the field at mid off. Good save. But it was wide enough for them to get a single. Yes, better that time from Gajnabi, but an excellent dive there from Shanice Pascal, putting in the effort. Not a lot of runs on the board, so they need lots of efforts like that if they are to pull off a victory against the Guyana team today. Fighter delivery, played on the onside this time. 
and uh, clear of the field at mid wicket and mid on long on has to run across to her right and just saw another single and at the end of the over then it's eight for no loss Pretty relaxed looking dressing room there for Guyana. Chasing just 67 for victory. Eight without loss after three overs. Ramarak to continue. And here's a big heave at this delivery. She missed it and it went straight past the keeper as well. And uh, they'll get two. Those are buys. Yeah, that one missed everything. Almost thought she was bold there for an instant. But getting some extra bounces, Ramarak, off this surface. And it just evaded the glove of the keeper as well. Grimman looking to take her on, take her on down the ground. Ramarak is the most experienced bowler in this attack. Best spinner as well, West Indies player. She's someone that they should be looking to see off and not get her into the game early. Not missing any play. The umpire is waiting for a signal from the scores that they have seen the signal. She signal buys. Scores are still trying to sort out the scoreboard. Played away to the offside. They are quickly through for a single. That's good calling on this occasion. Yeah, it's a good single. Both of them were clear about it and they took off with no hesitation. So that was very important in getting that single. I think I'm going to stick with the scoreboard to our left until the scorers can get the act sorted out. <laughs> it's showing 11 for no loss. Kajnabi is on strike. And she is advancing, hitting powerfully over the head of the bowler. And this will go to the straight boundary for four. That's very well played. It's nice use of the feet there from Kajnabi. We've seen her done that quite a few times in the over before. She played it along the ground. This time she decided to take it aerially straight back past the bowler. So nice hitting areas there from Kajnabi to pick up the first boundary for the Guyana team. And the score moves on to 15 for no loss. By the time the train had score reached 15, they had lost four wickets. Ramharak, she's advancing again and uh, misses it as she tries to play it into the offside and doesn't score. There's a change of angle here from Ramharak, opting to come around the wicket to the right-handed Gajnabi. But she has to be careful about the use of the feet with this angle that she's going to try to take it across her. Huh? Floated, driven into the onside. That's a good looking shot. It will be a long run for Kirby Down at long on and a, a fruitless run as well because it crosses a boundary for four. And so a second boundary in the over, but excellent use of this feet, made it into a full toss and gave a four run. Yeah, it was too full on the part of Ramarak to end the over. She needed to finish the over well, unfortunately. Fortunate Adam Tobago, another boundary to Gajnabi. And she has moved on to 14. The score is on 19. And remember... They're only looking for 67 runs to win this game. Yeah, good start from the Guyana team. Chasing a very low total. No wickets has been lost as yet, so that's very important in this chase. So 
So Grim has been mostly on target. And this delivery is punched back to her by Grimond. No runs. Four overs have been bowled. Single as it's played down on the onside of the pitch for Long On to come off the boundary. And so that's run number 20. 47 runs away from Victory Guyana. Uh, just there, that field uh, Long On, I mean, it's not a lot of runs to play with. Um, they're going to get it in singles anyway, so I'm just wondering if the skipper, especially to Grimman, can just bring that field up in the circle and just ask them to hit over the top. Nabi is looking to cut, misses. <laughs> Looks like the captain herself down here at Long On. No, that, that's Brittany at Long On. Uh, oh. She was the captain in the 50 overs, um, 50 over version of things. Ramarak. This one is played into the offside, finds backward point. The score remains on 20. Advancing again, playing it into the offside. Chance of a run out. And uh, the shout goes up. The finger goes up as well. And uh, so, again, we have seen some indifferent running in this game. But Trinidad and Tobago will take the wicket. And uh, so, wicket number one goes down for Guyana by the run-out route. And uh, we continue to see some indifferent running. Yeah, she didn't look too sure about that single. Started up quite late there, Grimman. So, she was always going to be in trouble once there was a clean pickup and done so by the field that cover. So the first wicket goes down. Shanita Grimman score is 21 without loss. Big scoreboard is saying 20. Score on our monitor is saying 21. So new batter, Reliana Grimman. into the offside a couple of exploratory steps and then they say no end of the over and so one wicket down we have completed five overs
just want to see Trinidad and Tobago just being a little bit more attacking. It's a pretty low score on the board. You have nothing to lose as it is. So maybe add a slip and bring that long on fielder up to that new batter. Short delivery hit in the ear, in the gap, and they'll have a single. It's the only way they're going to be competitive or show some fight in this game against Guyana and even get a victory is if they put pressure on them to score. So far, the scoring has been quite easy for the Guyana team. I think I'm going to decide for the last time to use the big scoreboard because a run has been scored and the scores and the monitor has not changed. The score on the scoreboard has changed. And so I'll tell you that the score is now 23 for 1. Two uh, so just a correction, if you're looking at the screen, the score reads 21 for 2. It's actually just one batter dismissed mm -hmm. for all the viewers out there. Delivery back of a length, but getting some good bounce, and we've seen good bounce from this end. Yes, I've seen that consistently throughout the day. Ramara got some bounce from that now on this occasion. Oh, the hands have gone up. Did that take an edge? We'll see from the umpire just now there is no signal which means that it came from the edge. It went between the legs of the keeper. They ran a single. And so you'll have to put that down as a chance. It was a difficult chance for sure. It took the edge of the bat, but it was a bottom edge, and it was played down into the pads of the keeper. She couldn't locate it, and they were able to scamper through for a single in the end. So Riliana Grimond and Sharon. Shabika Gajnavi still at the crease at the end of the power play. The score is 24 for 1. 24 for 1 after 6. They're playing for a top price of 10,000 US dollars to the winners. Now we see a change in bowling. That's Kirby who will be bowling. Yes, Lee and Kirby. One of the other faces in this um, attack. Well, Alpha sub C in bowling. I wouldn't say that she's a, a pacer per se. Probably gonna come on now and just pull wicket to wicket to Gajnabi. Well, really an agreement who's on strike now. Let's try to keep those thumbs in play. That's all her captain will be asking of her. Oh. Mm. Wrong footed the fielder at straightish mid wicket, and she's wanting two. Never was going to be two there. They settled for one, and uh, it seemed like a, a slow, low dipping uh, full ball and tugged away into the onside to the right of the fielder at mid wicket. 25 for the loss of one. Delivery, which is back of a length, punch into the offside and field it at mid off. So they'll have a single, make it 26 for the loss of one. We're in the seventh over. They're looking for 67 to win. Backward square is open, and this one is pulled down to that vacant position for four. So the guy in the team will move now into the 30s. It's always very positive when she comes to the wicket, really, and a grim one. She's going to play her shots on that occasion, just getting a bit of an edge and still somehow managing to pierce that gap between square leg and, and fine leg, picking up a, a much-needed boundary. Not that they're under any pressure. It's been easy going for the guy on the team. Picking up easy singles and now getting another boundary. 30 for the loss of one. This one is down the leg side and uh, this one is wide. 
and will run close to the boundary. Will it be pulled back just inside the boundary? Yes, they have crossed for two. And so that will add three runs to the total, but badly lined on that occasion. Yeah, certainly. And, and this isn't what the captain requires at this point in time. She just needs Kirby to be a little bit tighter to the stumps. She is one of the most experienced players in this lineup, Kirby. I've seen her produce some magic spells with the ball in hand, so the captain is hoping for something like that. Certainly need some sort of magic if they are to get over the line here against Guyana. And uh, the Guyana are almost halfway there. Now Kirby is asking the mid-off to come up inside, the, the long-off to come inside the circle. And a sent backward square back on the boundary. So backward square, mid-wicket, and uh, long on on the boundary. It's a better delivery there from Kirby. But with a boundary and the three wides that came before, prior to this delivery, that delivery, you would say that the over has been well set up by the guy on the team. So no need to take any risk. In the air, down to mid-wicket. There's a fielder chasing off the boundary. They'll come back for a couple. Good, strong throw. But two more runs to the guy in the total. Taking it to 35. It's 35 for one. I would love to see the replay on, replay on that throw there. That looked pretty close had it been a direct hit. Gajnabi was just running and not looking to ground her bat. So you not know, dismissed a few times like this, actually. Oh, she made it in time, but just when you're running there, always look to, to ground the bat as a, as a youngster. You don't want to be running like that. That's basically giving a freebie to the opposition if you get out in that mode. So at the end of the over, the score is, has moved up to 35 for one. Seven overs has been bold, have been bold. And uh, only 32 runs required. Lots of time to get those 32 runs. Seeing a very good picture of a cruise ship in the harbor. Looked like a German cruise ship. <laughs> Trinidad and Tobago bowled out for 66. And Guyana in reply, they are 35 for the loss of one. Kajnabi is on 17. And nine to Grimond. Short delivery played into the onside. There is Long on chasing across to her right. They'll come back for two. That's good running this time. 37 for one. Kajnabi moves on to 19. Yeah, every time the ball has been struck into the old field, Liliana Grimman in particular has been looking for two. So good running by her so far. Trinidad to Bebo. They have to find a way to get a wicket. They're only going to win this game if they somehow manage to get wickets. And this there's a chance. <sighs> Short of the fielder are long on. Another single. Takes the score into 38 for one.
going to be four runs. This one is swung away down to the backward square by Grimond. And picks up a boundary. Makes the total now 42 for the loss of one. And we're moving along very quickly in this game. Yeah, swung away behind square on the left side by Riliana Grimond. Continuing to show her positive intent. And really reverting the pressure onto that train down to Tobago C. Only 25 runs, um, the difference between the teams. Guyana looking for 25 to win. Change of bowling again from this, the media center end. It will be Brianna Haricharan. You're a spinner. Trinidad and Tobago only managed 66 when they batted first. Millington returning the figures of four for five. Just another 25 runs required, but four fielders are on the boundary. Short delivery, play down to backward square by Grimond. And there's a bit of a bubble. They'll have one. And uh, that means only 24 runs required now. You have to wonder just how can Captain Ramarap find a way to get wickets. It's been a cool intro introduction to Captain C for Ramarap. Has been. Get pulled out so cheaply. Don't give your bowlers much to work with. Well tossed up, <laughs> and this one is bowling her neck and crop. Grimond uh, was playing right across the line of the delivery, sight above the eye line, and just decided to go with a big swing. And uh, she gets bowled, and so the second wicket goes down for Guyana. Still some hope for Trinidad and Tobago. And yeah, there's the wicket that they needed. They needed one of the two batters to be out, and really, Anna Grimond, the one showing more intent. Swiping across the lane of that delivery, the ball dropping under the bat. Way too full to play that sweet shot. And she's ball. A wicket goes to the young wrist spinner, Brianna Haricharan. And uh, so it's now 2 for 45. 2 for 43, correction. Brings the captain Campbell to the crease. She's getting the delivery down the leg side, called and signaled wide. Forty-four for the loss of two. This one is turned into the onside to mid wicket, and they won't score. Harry Charan bowls to Campbell. And this one is again down the leg side and pulled firmly down to backward square for four. It was a badly line delivery. And Campbell didn't miss out at all. Picked up four runs to get off the mark and the score goes on to 48 for two. Yeah, gleefully accepted by Shemian Campbell. Way too short and way too straight. Way outside leg stump. 
It's easy pickings for Campbell, especially in the form that she's been in in the Super 50 competition. Here is Harry to run again and defend it away in the onside. Brings up the end of the over. And uh, so Guyana searching for 66 to win or 48 for two. Guyana 48 for two, and a short delivery is played down to mid on by Kajnabi. She gets another run that will take her to 22, and the score goes on to 49 for the loss of two. Advancing again gets a single. And that will take the score to 50 for two. So 50 coming up for the Guyana side. They just require a further 17 runs to win this game. Shot and played into the offside, straight to the fielder. They're at cover and they won't score. So losing wickets at 21 and 43. Advancing and driving firmly. There's a fielder coming off the boundary at long off. And so they'll get another single. Takes the score up now to 51 for two. Advancing again, finding the field at mid-wicket. She dives over it, partially stops it, but another single. It's looking way too easy for these Kayana Bahers. They've just confirmed what we thought all along. It's a still a very good pitch. haven't seen any extravagant amount of turn or anything to cause a worry for the Bahers. The end of the time over. It looks like Guyana 52 for two. And we will take a drinks break.
52 for two Guyana require just another 15 runs to win this game and uh, in the wicket we have Gajnabi who is on 23 Captain Campbell is on 6 10 overs have been completed and so another 10 overs to get all of 15 runs Short delivery pulled into the onside. There is protection on the mid wicket boundary, and so they'll just have a single. Kashnabi moves up. To That's in fact Campbell who moves up to seven. It's 53 for two. Just a few spectators in the park looking at the cricket. Football teams warming up next door. Changing angle for Ram Ramarap to Gajnabi. He also prompts a change in field. Fielder at deep square comes into the circle. The fielder from cover goes over to 45. Short flame. And Gajnabi is advancing and plays it nicely on the ground. Down to the fielder coming off the long on boundary for a single. So the score advances by one. It's 54 for two. I train that into big over buying. After 10 overs, they were 36 for 7. It's complete opposite for this Guyana team. Campbell is advancing, hitting in the air. There's a fielder down there, but she can only watch it sail over her head for 6. 6 good looking runs by a confident uh, Campbell. Yeah, really good use of the feet by Shemian Campbell. But she also use the wind direction as well. The wind would have helped that one to soar over the field. They're waiting at deep mid wicket. And we've seen the number of sixes hit today in that direction. So really good awareness by all batters so far. The right-handed batters in particular have peppered that deep mid wicket and long on area. Yeah, we're playing on pitch number four if you're counting from the east. And so it's a much shorter distance going that way. 60 for the loss of two. Campbell is swinging again in the air in the same general direction and gets another six. So she seems intent on finishing this game in a hurry. Yeah, scores are level no. Guyana team 66 for two. Just needed one run to complete victory. And she's swinging across the line. Shout goes up. Finger goes up. And so that's the wicket going. Campbell, the captain, going out LBW. And uh, so the scores are level, but the third wicket goes down. Pitched in line. Yeah, it's a bit of resolve for captain. Krishma Ramarat hit for two sixes in previous delivery, and she's able to get Shemian Campbell. Game is all about over. Guyana just needing one more run. 66 for three now. As we look at it again, she's bowling around the wicket. Fair enough. Would have gone on to hit. Sixty-six for three. Guyana can't lose this from here. Well, they can't. It will go into a super over, and I, if they lose all their wickets now, 
new batter looks to be Fraser. Now the slip comes in. Just one run needed for victory. Big swing in the air, chance of a wicket. If this is taken, it's dropped and so the game is done. That had to be taken to keep the game alive. And it fell into space. And so the victory has been completed by Guyana as uh, they made the 67 runs for the loss of three wickets. And uh, so second game completed and it's a victory going to Guyana. And we can tell you that when Trinidad and Tobago won the toss and decided to bat, winning the toss was the only thing they won today because they lost the game. And none of their batters really uh, troubled in terms of getting a decent score. And so they were bowled out for 66. And the standout performance there was Millington picking up four for five and Guyana romping to victory, making the six, 67 runs required. Congratulations to Guyana. Yeah, comprehensive victory by the Guyana side. You see congratulations all around for that Guyana side. A dejected and disappointing looking trend on a Tobago side that only did one thing right today and that was the call at the toss. Very cruel introduction to Captain C for Karishma Ramarat in her first game as captain. And they do have a lot to reflect upon to bounce back in this tournament. The Guyana side though, they were led by Plafiana Millington. Four for five. Took three wickets in her initial spell and then came back to clean up the tail. Four for five. So an outstanding display of bowling, outstanding display of fielding as well by that Guyana side. They were excellent in the field, got three wickets, and then they were able to finish the game just losing three wickets for the 67 runs that was needed. We still have another game today. More action to come because Jamaica will play the Windward Island starting at 7 o'clock. Until then... We hope that you will join us at 7 for game number 3 in the T20 Blaze.